Hey everyone, Professor Travis here. And in this conversation, I'm talking with my dear friend and UFC legend, Eve Edwards. We discuss quite a bit over the next half hour, most notably why men, women, and children should all learn the skill of fighting and all the benefits that come from acquiring real martial arts skill. I really think you're going to enjoy it. And thanks for watching. All right, Eve, so you've been training martial arts in some capacity for over 25 years. You've competed at the highest levels of the sport. You've got to train and compete and work with and train with the very best athletes and um, just rub elbows with like all the celebrities and superstars of the sport. And now, all these years later, now you're focusing primarily on coaching. From all that experience, what do you think is, what are some of the top qualities that a coach should have. And the reason I'm asking this for you is because not every coach has the competition resume that you have. And I feel like they bring a different, you bring a different experience to it. So what do you think of the top, the top quality that a, a good coach has in martial arts? Man, I'm, I'm stuck on that 25 years. <laughs> that seems like a lot. I feel old, because yeah. I wasn't young when I started. Well, and you also remember a time when you trained when you were younger than 25 years old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's different. But no, man, um, qualities that, that I think are really important for a coach, of course, leadership, right? Um, but like, some people don't know what being a leader is. And being a leader isn't, a, isn't always being right, mm -hmm. it isn't always being up front, it isn't always being the person with all the answers. You know, um, I think, yeah, you, most of the time you have the answers, or a lot of the time you have the answers. Um, and a lot of the times you're up front, but uh, like I have a squad of guys, and I also have a network that I built over this 25 years of, of friends and training partners, and so like a lot of my guys come here to train with you. Like my jujitsu is good, my jujitsu is solid. I completely conquer in my jujitsu, but I have no problem in deferring to you and bringing my guys to come and train with you and watch them get better and watch them get better in a way that that brings them closer to being able to compete against me. When they, when like just a few months ago, they knew nothing, or a few years ago, they knew nothing. Um, so being able to, like being a leader, is also being able to get out of the way at times, you know? Right. Um, so that's one of the, the traits that I think is super important. Another one is um, consistency, you know? Um, as a leader, or as, as, a, as a coach, you have to be consistent with your guys. Um, and you also have to have this ability to, like things are nuanced. So you have to have this ability to deal with individual situations, even if you have a blanket policy. Mm -hmm. you, know? yeah. um, you have to be able to, to pull out the, the pieces of a story that, that are unique to this individual. And if you don't address those things, then the issues will probably not be uh, rectified or, or addressed properly. You know? right. Well, it's kind of, I mean, that, that's kind of the concept of being tough uh, with a big heart. It's like you recognize that we're all so very different. Um, it doesn't mean you can make an exception for people that break a rule, but you understand that everyone is coming at life from a different, a different perspective. And, and I feel like as a coach, we have people we coach that are, they're athletes, but their, their personalities are not necessarily all primed. Like they're all like just hardcore soldiers. I mean, there are very emotionally sensitive fighters. And then there are stoic fighters. And then there are everything in Clouds. between. And then there are just ridiculous, like, like, why are you fighting? It's like, I don't know, it's fun. You know, it's like, and, and so understanding that is going to change the way that you communicate with someone. 100%. Um, and you look at some of the guys, like I look at your guys and I look at my guys that, that, that come together and train together, you know? And like, yeah, you you guys are mostly straight jujitsu. Mm -hmm. My guys are mixed martial arts. And, um, but like you see some parallels. I see like the quiet guy, like yeah. Chum yeah. and Sean. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I don't see it. what what are your I don't know which one of you guys is like the real boisterous, outgoing, fun one, funny one, like like Cam. 
Yeah. I know they exist, I just don't know all of you guys. Right, right. Um, <laughs> and then you get together, like, the young phenoms, like, I, I, I feel like maybe Julian would be that guy, like, mm -hmm. parallel to Bash, but just Bash a little bit ahead, but it haven't done it sure. You know, so it's like, just, just seeing these different personalities and being able to work with all of them um, in a group and individually. Because, yeah, you also have your, your, your separate individual relationships, right? Like, you, me, Andrew, we can get together and we can, we can um, Todd, you can take like any six of us that used to train together all the time and we can come together as a group and, and that dynamic is very different than when it's just like you and I, yeah. or you and Andrew, or something like that. But like, just being able to float between the, and, and, and also seamlessly like go from just you and I being together to everybody being together in the group. Um, or, and not just being together in a hangout situation, coming together to make a decision over something, coming together to plan for a training camp, coming together to plan for a birthday, for a belt um, promotion um, event, you know? Just, yeah, yeah. just being able to come together and do these different things at different times with different people and make everything kind of, or not even make it, it's just kind of when you're good with people, or when, especially with friends. I guess mm -hmm. not necessarily you only have to be good with people. When you're with your friends, yeah. the people that you care about, things just kind of find this way of melding together and working. Properly. So you touch on something that I, I try to use these types of examples to explain often to parents, but even just to prospective new students or the family of students who are considering doing martial arts. And there's a concern about the danger of martial arts. Because if you don't know anything about martial arts, you know that there's punches, kicks, chokes, and submissions, you know, breaking of limbs and slamming on necks, or at least that's what we perceive sometimes. And one of the closest uh, associations that people make with jujitsu is the UFC. And if you're in a, a school that actually openly promotes mixed martial arts, then that's definitely going to be what people think about. And so a parent comes in, they're like, well, they've heard somewhere that martial arts is, is good for character, but they're terrified of this danger. And so this perceived danger that they, that they imagine in their head. And what you just said about the camaraderie and the connection, that being sort of the, the unifying element of, of like what we're all doing, it's like, we do want to learn how to fight, yes. And we do want to learn how to do all the dangerous submissions and the knockout punches and kicks, we learned all that, but we actually, none of us want to hurt our teammates, and none of us want to get hurt. Uh, what do you, so that, that kind of leads me to my, uh, my next question is like, and it's, it's a good question, I'm interested in how you're gonna answer this, it's why do you think that everyone, men, women, and especially kids, should learn how to fight and be competent fighters? And maybe you don't think that, but, uh, <laughs> but, that, but I, I'll prepare. I think, with the exception of psychopaths and certain criminally minded people, yeah. I think it's a skill that almost everyone should learn on a fundamental level. 100%. Uh, I, I agree with that. I am. Um... <laughs> it's funny. I'm thinking about that. I'm like, what if everybody could fight? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> I mean, if everybody could fight, there would probably be a lot less fights. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Violence solves everything, but. At the same time, violence solves nothing. Mm -hmm. In the sense of, it solves everything because if it comes down to it, we have to throw it out. We have to throw it out. But when you're capable of violence, a violence yeah. like a real violence, especially of of, of intelligent violence, right. like trained violence, um, you're a lot more reserved. Mm -hmm. Like it's so much easier to not jump into a fight. That I think it would be if I had the same attitude, mentality, but not the skills. Yeah, you know, because like well, because then you're replacing skill with ego. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When you when you have the skill, the ego is calm. Hundred percent. Yeah. Because like th th there are things that I see sometimes, and and I'm like, you know, you get emotional. Mm -hmm. You you whether it be on the internet, whether it be in person, like there are times when I'm like, what the. And I, I just feel aggressive, but like, it's like, mm. but when it's directed at me, I, I kind of reflect more, you know, yeah. it's kind of like, huh. yeah, that's not worth it. 
Right. Sometimes I sometimes I don't like it because sometimes I let something slide and I probably shouldn't. Oh. But like I've, I've been better about at least speaking up. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, and then that's the other thing too. Um, it's kind of like I can be a jerk sometimes. So it's like let's start this conversation again and pretend that we're not wearing suits. Sure. You know. Yeah. Like because a hundred years ago, no, no, I mean not hundred. Probably closer to six hundred years ago, mm-hmm. like um, an argument would lead to your death. Sure, like, yeah. Um, maybe even a hundred years ago, especially with guns and whatnot. But uh-huh. um, in the wild west, especially out here in Texas. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but but yeah, the 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 thing about everybody learning martial art or every competent person, it, it gives you a confidence that that kind of negates some of the emotion, right? You don't necessarily want to prove your point through force. Sometimes you can just accept that another person has a different opinion and just move on. Um, hey, and almost in a way too, it leaves room for your uh, for your intellect to uh, expand because you have a part of your, I, I guess, you know, you could say ego that is, has been replaced with competence and confidence, right? It's like, if you threaten me, or if you say a nasty word to me, or, or you belittle me in some way, and I don't have the confidence to accept that maybe you're having a bad day or something's wrong with you, and I feel like, oh, you shame me, I have to, I have to yell back at you, I have to get in your face, I have to try to fight you, and and I think about it like the last fight I was in, besides a like a sanctioned cage fight, was before I started training martial arts. I haven't been in a, in a situation, I've had plenty of people be rude and inconsiderate and call me names and, and do things over the course of all those, you know, 25 years, but I, I uh, somebody, I, let me ask you this, have you ever, this, I, I find this question so funny when a student says like, oh man, what would you do if somebody like, you know, called you this name or got in your face or, you know, insulted you and I'm like, I, I just, I would wish them a good day and try to move on. Because when you have a skill, like the skill that you have, I, this is all I think about. So if you're actually gonna lay hands on somebody, it's reached a point where they're a threat to your physical safety and or your family. And at that point, I might have to really, really hurt you. And I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna push you because you push me. I don't wanna like do a little bit. I wanna let you have your ego moment if you cut me off in traffic, if you call me, if, if you need that at the moment, take it. Because I don't know your life, I don't know what you're going through. The moment you cross the line where I feel that you threaten my family, I might have to mangle you or kill you. And that's that's what I think is the difference between a trained martial artist and somebody who's got a lot of street cred for being in street fights, which is basically no skill. Yeah, that, um, like that concept kind of really resonated for me when I, when I lived in Austin, like it, it was kind of there, but it kind of resonated for me when I lived in Austin. I uh, run the lake, yeah. you know? and I remember getting out there and running, and this girl just she just books it past me, and I'm like, bro, she's a girl. I'm not gonna let her get by me. <laughs> I start going harder. I'm going harder. And she's just going, and she's killing it. And it's like I'm trying. I'm catching up. I'm closing the gap. I'm closing the distance. I'm closing the distance. So I'm still probably like 20 yards behind her, and uh, she stops. And she's resting and she looks at her watch and she stops and she's checking her pulse. And by the time I like by the time I get by her, she's checking her pulse. And I'm like, she's kinda done. She's done. I'm mm-hmm. I just got started. Now yeah. I got like another three miles to go and I'm getting tired already. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's kinda like that. So it's kinda like that when someone pulls out in front of me and says like, I just don't know where you are. Right. I don't know what's going on in your life. So like whatever ingredients to make the recipe of you at this moment, mm-hmm. like those have nothing to do with my ingredients. Right. Like, yeah, I have some salt in mine, you got salt in yours, but you got paprika and all this stuff. I got oregano, I don't have any. So it's kind of like, <laughs> I, I don't hang out. <laughs> like, you can tell, that's how I got fat. But uh, <laughs> no, but seriously, though, seriously, though, the, reason, the reason why I say that, though, is uh, like the things going on in your life aren't what's going on in mine. And when those two things come together, they don't always have to be volatile. Right. You know? um, I think martial arts is a, is a, is a good way to recognize and understand that too. Um, Cause there are days when you have like hundred percent, I know you've been here. There are these days sometimes when you walk into the gym 
And you you woke you woke up and it's like, yeah, it's gonna be good. And then you walk in the gym and it's just like, I'm not feeling it anymore. I'm not. And then there's mornings when you wake up and you're like, I'm not feeling it at all. But then you come to the gym and you do the work. And at this point in my life, there are those days when I've done the work yeah. and, I've done, and I didn't feel like I'm gonna do it. I've done the work and at the end I'm like, I still don't feel like this. Yeah. But either way, I'm always glad when it's done. Right. That I did it, right? So um like well, having this outlet. Having this outlet kind of kind of changes the way I interact with the rest of the world, mm -hmm. and um, I think for everybody that could be a beneficial thing. On top of the fact that like it's the exercise that everybody needs, yeah. um, like learning the skills and having like learning the skills. First of all, you have to, especially when it comes to mixed martial arts and jujitsu, you don't gain the skills without discipline. Yeah. Um, like one of the things I, I try to tell my students, because because I'm sure you see it too, you know, you teach a technique and guys are drilling the technique for like, you give them, let's say 10, 15 minutes to drill the technique, and like three minutes in, there are like seven groups, but only two groups are doing techniques, the other five groups are kind of just sitting around, and, and it's like, have you mastered this technique yet? Mm -hmm. But like, you, you, have, you have to have the discipline to continue going and just continue and get the repetitions in, and like, I feel like that kind of discipline kind of bleeds over into the rest of life in, yeah. into doing things like, um, like, like not just into physically doing things, but also into like taking time and thinking. Mm -hmm. Because like when you're when you're repping your technique, it gets to the point where like I'm repping technique with you, right? And we're constantly doing the technique, but we're talking about something else. Yeah. Right. So like. Um, when I say that, I feel like having these interactions with people where it could turn volatile, it could not, but like you have the, the, the state of mind or the capacity in your mind to be in this situation and to not let your emotions go, yeah, well, I'm going to, you know, you, you're, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm upset, but I'm also thinking about what got me here and what's on the other side of this, mm -hmm. right? And the reason, the way I parallel that to like training and, and being disciplined and repping the technique and being able to, to talk about something that's not what you're actually physically doing is that when, when, you're, when you're doing this technique and your body, your muscle memory, and you're able to just do the technique, but you're able to talk about something else, it's like you're in this moment and your body, your emotions feel like doing this thing. Yeah. But your brain is attuned to, to, to yourself so much that it's like, yeah, but it's not worth it. It's right. not worth it. It's just those things don't line up, so let's not put them together. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think, too, there's a there's such a, a balanced medium for, like, a full spectrum of personality types. So, like we were saying earlier, like, why should, why should kids do well? There's, like, a kid who has very low confidence is frail and weak. And then a kid who has high confidence because he's, you know, the bully type and he's a, both of, both of them will be drawn to a more centered position by training because the, the frail, weak kid with, you know, who's afraid to talk to anyone and is always getting picked on, he's going to gain some skills and some ability to defend himself. And with that comes, like, you just, you stand tall, you, you speak differently, you stand up for yourself. And then the, the cocky, arrogant guy is going to be humbled from day one when the skinny girl chokes him out and makes him tap over and over again. So he's going to have to take a step back if he continues with it, which is what you said, like, these, these changes don't take place over the course of a couple of days. And this is sometimes I, I have to have this conversation with parents because they're like, well, I don't know if my... My, my son's attitude has not improved yet. We did this because we wanted attitude to improve. I'm like, well, it's been three days. <laughs> you give it a little time. And sometimes I just say, like, are you, <laughs> are you supporting the discipline that we're enforcing? Because he's doing great on the mat. Right. But in a different environment, they'll always regress back to the norm. And so, so, yeah, I think that's like, for one, you should be able to, everyone should be able to fight. I know this sounds... Everyone should not fight. They should be able to fight. Because when you're able to fight, like you said, we don't, really don't want to. Because we know it's, it's painful and somebody's getting hurt. So it's, you're going to do everything in your intellectual capacity to stop it. 
And then if you have to, you're going to have the skills to actually protect yourself and protect people. And there's so much about mastering the art of competent self-defense and martial arts. I, I can't like I can't stress enough to parents like this is not something that's going to make them a little more confident. This is going to completely transform the adult that they that they turn into. And um, and if you're already an adult, same thing. You're going to feel this rejuvenation like oh my gosh, like I'm freaking strong. I know how to choke somebody unconscious. I won't do it, but I told him we could. It's a good place to be. You know what I mean? It really is. And so um, so. That, okay, so that's a good segue for like the other thing I want to talk about, which is I think that what I, what you and I are talking about for some people would be described as toxic masculinity <laughs> or something basically that says any form of masculine competence or something, you know, that you say could be used, you know, for violence uh, should be shunned. And anyone who is a weak person Let's say the kid who is afraid to talk is getting bullied. It's not the parents or the individual's job to become strong. It's society's job to pat the weak person on the back and say, we all need to do better. You continue to be weak because that's the virtue. And this is something that drives me crazy because being weak may not be the fault of the individual. But recognizing your weakness and embracing it and refusing to change drives me crazy. 100%. And I, that's why I think what we do is so powerful because we are arming people with so much more than just technical skills. But something where they actually say like, you know what? I can do whatever the hell I want with my life. It's going to be very hard, but I, I see through the training, through the, the struggle of getting tapped out, learning the lesson, trying again and overcoming it, like I can become strong, not just physically, like I can become a strong minded, capable person. And so like, what do you, like, how do you feel about just this, just this modern area of embracing everybody for being a pussified version of what it's supposed to be? Yeah, no, I, um, I'm a big, fan of recognizing seven deadly sins. Mm -hmm. One of the ones I really hate is sloth. Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh -huh. that, oh, man. That really, really, really bothers me. Um, and and it, really, it really hurts my heart, too, because I think back to, like, COVID, and, like, I, I succumbed to sloth for a couple of months. Sure. Yeah, you know? Yeah. It's really bad. Um, but that's something that can quickly be turned around. And, 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 and so embracing weakness is, is, is you're, just, you're just giving away all your agency when you embrace weakness, mm -hmm. you know? Um, what, you're giving away responsibility, like, there's just, there's just so much. And with, like, you give, you give away your agency, you give away your responsibility. Um, I don't know if you, know, you can know who you are in, in that sense, right. you know? And then you have all these people validating you. Um, like, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not big on this body positivity movement. Mm -hmm. These types of things, I think these are weaknesses yeah. that are that society just kind of kind of inflates or, or feeds. And I saw all, I saw some videos, and I don't remember the exact context, but it was about it was about America, like back in the day, like in the in the fifties, sixties, potentially. Um, and I was just talking about the, the fitness level. Yeah. Um, like physical education in school, things that you had to be capable of doing. And um, you look at everybody. Oh, I've seen that. Nobody's fat. Everybody's Everyone on monkey bars and yeah. like jumping. Yeah. And now it's like, uh, touch your toes, pass. It's exactly. <laughs> and it's like this. But then you look around the world and you see how many people are like just embracing this, this, this weakness, this... Um, Convenience, yeah. Convenience kind of breeds weakness too, you know. Um, so like, I, I just, I, it to me, it's disgusting. To me, it hurts my heart. I love how my daughter's like, like even when I'm exhausted after like coming here and then doing conditioning after the train, and then I'm going home and I, yeah, I want to rest. And my daughter's like, Daddy, can you play with me? Yeah. And it's like I'm so tired. Of course I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. But like. Like, cause, cause I, I, I want her, I remember, man, I remember, I remember being a kid and my mom, my whole life my mom had been into fitness, 
you know? Right. Um, she's teaching aerobics. Uh, and I'm just exhausted and I'm tired. And I'm, she's waking me up super early so we can drive to the other side of the island because she wants to go run the golf course. Yeah. And um, I'm sleeping in the car because I can't keep up with her. I'm right. running seven, eight. She's running like six miles. Um, and, and But like my whole life, that's what I've seen. That's what I've seen. That's what I've seen. So like, I think that is a big part of why I, to, to this day, I, you know, nearly 50 years old, like, I'm still in, in, in what I consider decent shape. Yeah. But at the same time, by my standards, I feel fat. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, because you're, again, you're a martial artist. Your standards are a competent martial artist. You have to have the aerobic, you know, stamina, the physical stamina, everything that goes with it. So you've set a very high standard. Um, um, the world, or at least America in many ways, has set a standard of like, just be fat. Because you're supposed to be, in, you know, love, there's no body shaming. It's like, and I'm not saying you should shame anyone. I'm saying it should be a crime to educate anyone in the, in the way where they believe that being obese is, is equal to being healthy. If something not. required your you to save them. You have to run up the stairs. There's a lot of people that could not do it. They couldn't run up the stairs to save somebody if they had to. And that's why, yeah, I, I think, I mean, I'm biased. And I'm not saying this is the only sport or activity that solves this, but it, it's one of the few. Martial arts is one of the few activities that basically says you cannot hide or blame anything on anyone. You're responsible for your progress by showing up and by giving great effort. Like I always have like three criteria I talk about, like attitude, effort, and teamwork. You have to try to bring a positive attitude even if you're having like a bad day, you have to do that. You have to give effort and you have to work well with others. If you get good at those three traits, you become a pretty desirable human being in society. To an employer, whether you know if you're a business owner, you're gonna work well with people. And if you do martial arts, you're gonna be in shape and you're gonna be confident. And now, like, we're saying that there's, there's this thing, like, telling people to embrace weakness and vulnerability. And, you know, again, there's a difference between vulnerable, like, I could come to you, we've been friends a long time, I can say, Eve, I'm, I'm going through something, I'm in, I'm in pain, I, I need to share something with you. And you're not going to say, quit being a pussy, we're going to talk yeah, about it. So. You might, yeah, some of it may be. <laughs> but, like, we could do that, and that's a type of vulnerability that everybody needs friends and family like that. That's different, but it would be different if you said like, stop trying and just be that. Be the sad, suffering person that you're feeling at the moment for the rest of your life and blame the world for it. It's like, well, and I think I see that a lot now. Um, so all those people like, get to a jiu-jitsu school right now and just start, <laughs> start training. Or do something better than what you're doing right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah, 100%. What you were saying about being able to go to a friend and talk to friends, like, yeah, we talk to each other, but, like, of course, we would kind of, kind of rib each other also, but, like, it's a thing to, it, it, it kind of helps you, like, deal, we got to deal with things a little different. Of you course. Know? And being in this environment, being around other, other people who compete, I think, this environment is more masculine than feminine. Sure. And, and, and it, it, but like, look at all the women that are involved. Look at all the women that we train with. Like, mm -hmm. I, like going against and training with some of the, the, the better women in the sport, like that, that just kind of double down, sold me on, on how effective this is. And, and it kind of goes back to the first question of like, of martial arts. Um, and then, and, 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 no, no, sorry, that wasn't the first question, but I feel like we covered it already, but martial arts just being so effective and so helpful with confidence. Like, my daughter's gonna have to be, she has, mm -hmm. she's gonna be a black belt. So yeah. like, she has to be, because it's like the best self-defense in the world. Right. right? Um, just, I, I feel like I'm a little bit all over the place, but I'm like, I. Well, basically the idea is like, um, Tying it back to like why everyone should do martial arts. And I know we, we, we probably veered a little more toward uh, boys and men, but you brought a good point is there are a ton of women that do this. And I really think the, the environment when there's a mutual respect 
between the sexes and they train and you they know how to work together because men and women are different despite what everyone's saying they actually are and this is an environment where the the woman becomes more empowered more confident and men have more uh respect for the training partners that are women like i love one of my favorite things about our academy is our women's team we have women only classes we have these get togethers and the energy that they kind of bring the support they bring to each other is is awesome and when you couple that with families that train men women and kids mm. that is one powerful family when you see all of them doing it together because we're all so like men and women are very different children are very different than both than, than they're both of their parents and everybody has to uh, sort these differences out through communication, but throw in some some jujitsu, some like physical expression and sweating, and then I just think like it's everybody who has a, a like a, an argument with each other should all train together first. Maybe if you really you know argue, you shouldn't train directly together, but have a training session. Yeah. How many times have you been having a bad day and you train? None of your problems have gone anywhere, but you you now see it with a completely different lens. Hundred percent, right? Yeah, things like things don't matter as much as far as to bring you down mm. when you're when you have something like this. Yeah. It could be a different sport. It could be a different hobby. Um, but especially if it has something to do with physical activity. Right. right. And then I think this just enhances it because of the skills that you gain because of this sport. I do you think um, that we have both experienced the, what would you call like transformative nature of martial arts? I don't know who or what I would be. I imagine something kind of cool, but nothing uh, close to um, the type of person I am today because of martial arts. And I don't just mean uh, the ability to coach or the competency as a practitioner, but the connections that I've made with close friends like you and several you know, other black belts and, and just the journey that this has taken me on is something I wouldn't train in a million years and I would never want to become the type of person who takes an easier path in life. And I think this is what is missing among a lot of people right now. It's, it's very tempting to take an easier path of sort of being, you know, playing the the victim mindset or, or, or just the, the weak mindset and having people kind of embrace that. And, and, and I, I think what we do is important. It's important to turn people in the other direction and show them you have agency, you can become something great. And this, are, well, I'm doing the same thing I'm putting up there. This will steer you in that direction. Yeah, the, um, that's another thing too about this about this sport. Um, not just the sport of jujitsu, but just physical activity in itself. Um, having that having that agency and not being vulnerable and weak, it kind of bleeds into a lot of other things. Um, I was talking about convenience. Like we, everybody loves convenience, but it seems that weak people love convenience more mm. and what convenience ends up doing when you when you start to like give in to the convenience of things I, I feel like the problems get swept under the rug right you know um, the convenience of not dealing with it and putting it off until it becomes and not not until but sometimes it's also you put things off and they become a problem for people other people yeah. around you that they should not be a problem for and then they're still not a problem for you but when society is saying, oh, you're weak, it's okay, we should adjust to you, you shouldn't adjust to us, then the problems get put, my problems get put onto you, mm -hmm. you being society, not wanting to make me face those problems, now you're dealing with it, yeah. and you can't because it's not your problem, Right. but you don't want to tell me yeah. that my problem is causing you a problem because that causes me a whole new problem. It's also um, insincere, the people that say, that join that and say like, oh yeah, we'll, society will do it, you're good. No one, what they're really saying is society, not me, the rest, will take care of it. 
but nobody actually steps up. Right. You know, and, and then the problem goes unresolved, and people are secretly non-trusting of those types of people, even if they give them the empathy they're looking for at the moment. They're, they're like, hey, yeah, you're right. You're, it's not your fault. Everything's okay. Um, but I don't want to work with you. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to hire you, <laughs> right? Because you bitch and complain. Yeah. And you're not bringing to the table what I actually need. And that's really what the world is interested in, is people that bring a set of skills that are valuable to other people. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I started giggling for a second to myself when you started saying, when you said, uh, the problem, everybody sees the problem and they say it's a problem, but nobody really deals with the problem. Yeah. <laughs> when you said that, my brain just went, government. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so sick. Yeah. Like, so, like, um, what are the lessons that you take with you that sort of transcend all the challenges and in some cases, faux challenges that a lot of people think are holding them back? I think it's kind of hard to point out all of them, but I think the one that stands out the most to me is like, the truth doesn't care about anything. The truth is just the truth. Mm -hmm. um, whether that means your jujitsu is better than mine, my kickboxing is better than yours, my, um, um, somebody is stronger than me, somebody's faster than me, this fight happened the way it did, uh, or, it's, or it's going to happen the way it's going to happen. Um, those things in all of the world, right? I can only control what I can control. Uh, and, and that's super important, I believe, because um, like when you talk about the political aspect of things, right? Um, there's a bunch of nonsense going on in the world and those things don't really matter to your life. They're like, there are aspects of them that affect your life, mm -hmm. but in the end, um, what you do daily, what you put into your into your body and into your brain daily matters. What um, how you treat the people around you and the people you interact with daily matters. Um, just the the things that are most immediate to you and in the vicinity of you matter the most, and that radiates outwards. Like, you are the center of your universe, but you're not the center of the universe. So, like, you have to be able to understand that your, like, reality is reality, and everybody sees it from a different perspective. There's no, there's no, no my reality and your reality. There's just my perspective of that and yours. And I have to, I have to come from a point of, I can respect yours, until it infringes on mine. And like, there are points where they intersect and that's great. And there are points where they, points where they, inf where yours could potentially infringe on mine. And it's like, we have to separate here. Um, because like, otherwise it's going to be a problem. Right? Yeah. And I think, I think with people they see, and I could be wrong, but I think with people they see that in the bigger scheme, coming in on them and they feel like it's infringing on them and these some of these things have absolutely nothing to do with you yeah you know so i think i think people need to learn how to kind of kind of learn how to mind their own business <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. i think the internet made the world a whole lot smaller yeah. and people start to think that uh these things that are random occurrences apply to them daily right you know um there are things that are like that are real problems in the world, but you'll never face them. Mm -hmm. You'll never have to have to deal with them. So um, it's good to have the information, be aware of it, but don't be afraid of everything. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean don't be afraid of anything. But also, um, the best way to like, and here's another lesson that I learned actually through fighting. Um, get nervous every before every fight. You get nervous, and I'm like. I remember my heart would start racing and that anxious feeling and then I learned at some point to sit back and think, okay, what, why are you nervous? If you're going to get in a fight, you don't know what's going to happen. Well, what could possibly happen? Let's go through the fight. 
They're in the corner, you come out, he comes out. What's gonna happen? I don't know. Um, I'm gonna throw a jab, or he's gonna throw a jab. Okay, you throw a jab, what happens next? Well, this, this, this. I have an answer for this, this, and this. He throws a jab, what do you know? Parry it. Okay, what if he faints it? You parry it and then you get hit. Oh, then I gotta adjust. I gotta throw I'm gonna create the distance. I gotta do something about the distance. So every question that I could come up with, I had an answer. Even if my answer wasn't the right answer for that guy at that time, um, and I didn't get the win, yeah. it happened less often than not, right? Yeah. It didn't happen more, more often. So um, it's one of those, and, and what I learned from that, or what I'm trying to say with that is like, preparation, be prepared. Know, know about these things, make a little, make a plan. Sometimes the plan, if, 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 if the issue affects you, actually affects you, make a real plan. If the issue doesn't affect you, think it through, think about how you would potentially deal with that, and then you can move on. You don't have to worry about these things that don't affect you, but the things that do, if you have a plan for them, like, well, it's, it's it's also like, that's all you can do. Right. You, you have, we have little control over most of what's going on in the world. You do have control over the decision you make. And one thing that like you said, you, you have a fight, you're nervous. We'd rather maybe not feel nervous, but if that becomes part of your plan, like, no, you're going to be nervous. You're fighting. If you're not nervous, something's wrong. And the only option when you fight, you never, you never had the thought of, I'll just run away from the fight. It's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing, you know what I mean? Like I'm doing the fight. Maybe I'm not as, maybe I'm more or less confident than before. I'm more or less nervous, but I've made this decision and I'm, I'm going forward. 100%. And yeah. my daughter, my daughter, she says it to me now. She's four and she's like, Daddy, I'm scared. And I'm trying to get her, like, this is going to be a mantra for her, I hope. But over time, I, I want to ask her and have her respond because this is what I tell her Daddy, I'm afraid. Well, what is fear? Uh, fear is an opportunity to be brave. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, of course, if so, like they, we were at this play place and they have this foam pit that you could jump into. They had these two diving um, platforms. She would jump off the low one. She wanted to do the high one, so she went up there. It was really high. I got up there and I was like, "Whoo!" I see why she's nervous, right? But I know it's not gonna hurt me. Big foam pit, so I do it. And. Um, but I could, I completely understand why she's nervous and she's trying, she's trying, she just doesn't get the, the call to go. And um, like, it's like, okay, so you see other kids do it, you won't get hurt, but you're afraid and that's perfectly fine. Now, if you're not ready to do it now, you're four, they're like 12 year olds and 11 year olds jumping and you wanna be like them and I get that. But like, if you know you're not gonna get hurt or if like, you don't, of course, that's why the fear is that you think you might get hurt. But like the odds or, or people are reinforcing the fact that you won't, like if you can get to the point where you can embrace that fear and go, that's a moment to grow. But like, and you don't always have to do that, but you can't let that fear control you. And I was so proud of her for being up there and being ready to attempt it. Yeah. And the fact that she didn't go, it's fine because she went off the, the one that was a little bit low. And even that one was like for a four year old, yeah. that was, you know, that was a big deal. So, um, but like, that's, that's a thing for me too, man. Fear is not something that we should shy away from. It's like that, that's going back to kind of ties into- it's healthy discomfort. Right, yeah. convenience, it ties into convenience. It's, it's convenient to never be afraid, bro. Right. Like that's a real thing. But like this, this emotion, this feeling is something that, that evolutionary is, is in us to to keep us alive and to make us stronger yeah you know um like i think about that i think about i think about like my ancestors and being an, an, an african it's like shit like lions and these, these different guys like yeah. but it's like there's been there's probably been thousands upon thousands over the history of this of our species of people who've come into contact with lions mm -hmm. and like yeah, the lions have won most of them, but they haven't won them all. Right. You yeah, know? Yeah. So, like, it's one of those situations where they're like, of uh, all those ones that the lions didn't win, right, those people embraced the fear and, and tried to do something about it. Yeah. Didn't succumb to the fear. Right. So, like, that's a thing. It's like, it's another thing. It's, it's, a, it's something that it's kind of one of, like, 
some of these little mantras or these little things that I say in my head all the time, like being from the Bahamas, being out on the ocean a lot. Um, if I'm 20 miles, if, if I'm on a boat and it sinks and like the boat actually goes down and I'm on a raft or something, I'm not, I'm not, even if I'm hanging on to something, I'm not just gonna hang on to it and stay there. I, I figure I'm gonna have to um, do what I can to try to find some kind of land or something. But if, yeah. I, don't, if, I, if I die out there, it's not because I fucking quit. It's I think that's, that's, a, that's a good way of looking at it. It's like, it, it's, it can be beneficial sometimes to, if you're, if you're on a sunken you know, boat and you're just hanging on a plank of wood, no one can help you. All you can do is kick your legs. And if you can adopt that metaphor for every problem, it doesn't mean that if somebody comes by on a yacht that you don't say, hey, pick right. me up. Right. You can ask for help. But assume no one's coming to help you yet and start moving. And if you can do that and just say like every problem, challenge, pain in my life, whether it's my fault or not, I'm taking ownership of it and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna take it all to myself. It's, it's actually incredibly liberating because then you don't have to be hung up on all these like this person and that person, they hurt me. So no, 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 they're all done. It's all me, I'm going to go in this direction. And I think, um, yeah, I think that's a great, a great spot to end. That's awesome. I'm with it. Cool. Well, thank you. I can't wait till we do the next one. I'm with it's it. Let's good. go. Yeah, let's do it, brother. Let's go. <laughs> All right, my friend. Peace out.